in my book, The Public Professor, I'm trying to identify things that people who do public engagement really well know how to do. So one of the big things is they can see the big picture. They know where their research fits in because they understand the rules of the game and the area they're interested in. They know who the players are. Um, and because they know who the players are, they can do another thing, which is to network really well. So they have networks that go well beyond academia. They have journalists and policymakers and business people in their networks. And once you have all those people in your network, you have to know one other thing, which is how to communicate with diverse audiences. Now that's hard, but uh, it can be done. It means getting rid of jargon and how we talk to people. It means thinking about what they care about, so we're communicating something useful to them. And uh, put those three things together and you have a really good strategy for being an effective public professor. So I have myself been publicly engaged and talking about issues for a long time. And um, I found that it has had a big impact on my teaching. For one thing, it's made me interdis more interdisciplinary in terms of how I think about the world. And because I teach in an interdisciplinary program, I can at least understand what political scientists are trying to, to think about and sociologists are trying to think about when they're looking at organizations and big public institutions. I can even put my head into um, to a campaigner to think about what makes a policy politically feasible. How do we think about that kind of political analysis? So I can actually offer my students a much wider variety of examples and understandings than they would get just from me being an ordinary economist, I think. Um, it's made a big difference in my research because I have a, a sense of which kinds of questions are important in, in a public debate. And sometimes it's pulled me into research that I might not have done otherwise um, or use methods I might not have used otherwise um, because to answer a, a particular question I had to, to use those methods. So when I was studying marriage equality for same-sex couples, I went to the Netherlands and wanted to interview same-sex couples to understand their decision-making process about getting married. It's hard to get that from a survey or from survey data. And in fact, there wasn't even survey data that existed on that topic. So, um, so I had to approach it in a different way. And so that's an example of how you know, research can, can get shaped. Another one is in thinking about the consequences of policies. Often that's what people are debating. Well, if we let gay couples get married, you know, marriage as an institution will collapse. Um, that was a claim that a lot of people made. And it gave me a, a question that I could try to answer with data. So that was um, a research question that's not really theory driven, like most of them are in academia, but it was one that had really important consequence or really important um, contributions to, to a big public debate. It can be kind of daunting if you're thinking about getting involved in trying to connect your research to the public if you've never done it before. So I think there are some things that are pretty straightforward and simple that people can do right away if they just want to get started. And one of them is to talk to people. The hardest thing about communicating our research is learning how to do it in a way that's understandable, that doesn't use all of our jargon. And I will tell you, people who are not academics will very quickly either have their eyes glaze over if you're being too jargony, or they will tell you, that seems interesting, but I have no idea what you just said. And it's a humbling experience. So getting that kind of practice is really important because when you get the opportunity to talk to people who have some ability, some power to make changes happen, you want to make sure you're getting your message across. So that's one thing. We have lots of social media that give people the ability to connect to audiences that go way beyond academia. And you could practice tweeting an interesting and useful finding from a study that you've just read. It doesn't even have to be your own study, but do it for your own studies too. Think about when you've got a new study coming out in a journal, write a press release, draft one, work on it with maybe the university news office to help you hone it and figure out who to send it to. Start making those connections and you'll find that the next connections will get easier because those people will connect you with others. So it's, it's just important to get started in some place that feels the most comfortable and I think very quickly people get excited about it and realize they can do, they can do even more. I think most people think that it's social scientists who have the most to contribute uh, to policy discussions. But actually, many other kinds of scholars can be really important in those debates. For example, understanding 
the history. How do we get to this moment? Um, having historians who can weigh in on the, um, the complex uh, forces that have shaped a particular policy area over time could be um, really useful. Um, what's worked in the past, what hasn't worked in the past? Um, have we ever seen these kinds of moments before? Sometimes we think, oh, everything has suddenly changed, and we find out that you know, we've, we've seen this in the past, and sometimes the not too distant past. I think having people who can interpret what's going on in, uh, in the media, for example, requires you know, people beyond social scientists, people who understand how to, how to read texts you know, from the humanities, I think can, can help us say, well, you, know, you might think that this was just an ordinary depiction of, of an African-American man, but in fact, we know that this is, you know, invokes all sorts of stereotypes or um, that it's a that we can read this in an entirely different way and get a different opinion out of it. So I think there are many different kinds of scholars who can contribute to, you know, either understanding policy or just the larger culture that we live in. That's a lot of what we should be doing to help people think about the world and, that we live in and what kinds of changes we might need to be making. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.